What's up everyone and welcome. Can you imagine being scammed out of 100 million dollars? What about 50 million? Or 3 million? Or is there even a number that I could be sitting here and say to you and you would be like, eh, you know, that, I'm okay with that? I don't think so. In this episode, we're going to look at the 12 worst phishing attacks to date. And what I mean worst, or when I say worst, what I really mean is in terms of getting scammed out of a lot of money. The smallest amount we're going to discuss today is $3 million. Now, if that's nothing to you, then hit me up. I'll give you my bank account. We can do a transaction right now. If not, then stick around to find out how you could protect yourself and your company from these types of attacks. In all of these examples, there is a common thread. Let's see if you can spot it. Now, before we do get into the poor suckers list, uh, let's take a quick look at the impact. If you do absolutely nothing to protect yourself against these attacks. Now, if you did watch my episode on the top 10 types of phishing attacks, then this information is not new to you, but I suggest you watch it again because I really don't think you can see it enough to really grasp the impact and the destruction that these types of attacks can do. So let's jump right in. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. According to research by Proofpoint, who interviewed thousands of security leaders around the world, 75% of organizations on the planet experienced some sort of phishing attack in 2020. 12% of those who took part in the survey um, had, had over 100 phishing attacks in 2020. 37% of respondents had 11 to 50 phishing attacks, and 28% had 50 to 100 attacks. Furthermore, the impact of phishing attacks, according to the respondents, include 60% of organizations actually lost data. The data is gone. It's not there anymore. It could be customer lists. It could be uh, financial documents. It could be, it could be trade secrets. Information is gone. 52% of organizations had credentials or accounts compromised. This means somebody now has passwords and usernames to be able to get into your network and steal data, perform ransomware attacks, or what have you. 52% of respondents. 47% of organizations were infected with ransomware. That's very costly. That means you, all of your systems are encrypted. You can't get access to it unless you pay your ransom or if you happen to have backups somewhere out off-site that didn't get encrypted and you can restore. But you still lose money because you lose time. Your IT department needs to work overtime to get things back online. So that's 40% of, of, of organizations that uh, responded were infected with ransomware. 29% of organizations were infected with malware. Again, another devastating thing. It can just destroy data. It can destroy systems. You have to re re replace all of the either software or um, sometimes hardware. It's pretty devastating. And then 18% of organizations experienced financial losses. That's direct loss of money in some way, shape, or form, whether business lost or you got scammed out of millions of dollars, like $100 million or $50 million or even $3 million. It still hurts. In 2020, business email compromise, which is just one form of phishing. It's also known as BEC or CEO fraud. This version alone cost $1.8 billion in financial losses in 2020. So it's it's without all the others. It's without spear phishing, whale phishing, all the other types of phishing, just BEC alone. CEO fraud type email phishing alone cost $1.8 billion. And that's just what was what was reported or information that could be found. It cost $1.8 billion in 2020. So phishing is one of the most vicious and dangerous threats to your business, regardless of whether you're a large corporation, a small business, or something in between. The most successful phishing attack examples often involve a combination of different social engineering tactics and can involve the impersonation of CEOs or company executives, government organizations, charities, vendors, and business partners. At some level, everyone is susceptible to phishing scams because they prey on an individual's personal judgment insecurities, or in some cases, your incompetence. Whether you're a C-level executive, a celebrity, or an employee at some small business, these attacks are designed to use a variety of deceptive tactics to try to influence, manipulate, or outright trick you into performing a particular task. The goal could be to gain access to vital systems or to get you to make a large wire transfer to fraudulent accounts. 
Falling for business email compromise schemes that involve phishing and email spoofing are among the most costly mistakes company uh, mistakes companies around the world make. Mattel, the manufacturer that sells Barbie and other kids' toys, was scammed out of three million dollars through CEO fraud, the BEC uh, fraud I mentioned before, in 2015. On April 30th, 2015, a finance executive got a note from the newly installed CEO, Christopher Sinclair, requesting a new vendor payment to China. The finance executive didn't see anything wrong with the request, but checked protocol anyway. So they had a protocol, the finance person checked that protocol. What was the protocol? Well, transfers required approval from two high-ranking managers. She qualified it as one, and then the CEO, the apparent request from the CEO counted as two. So the transfer was made. In total, $3 million was wired to the bank of Wenzhou in China. She mentioned the payment later to Sinclair, who denied making the request. Mattel contacted law enforcement and their U.S. bank, but were told that it was too late. The money was gone. The thieves had hit Mattel at just the right time. A new CEO had just started, and the company was getting ready to for massive growth in China, so payments to the nation wouldn't be out of order. However, luck was on Barbie's side in that the Fishers performed their attack the day before a bank holiday. This gave Mattel executives time to get international police and the FBI involved and ultimately recover their stolen funds within days of the transfer. Though They got super lucky. If any other day, this money would be completely gone. It would have been taken out of the account or transferred to yet another bank account and just gone. McEwen University, an educational institution in Canada, was bilked out of nearly $11.8 million in 2017 when Fishers imitated Edmonton Construction Companies and sent out fake invoices as part of a massive scam. The scam started when staff failed to call one of its vendors to verify whether emails requesting a change in banking information were legitimate. McEwen University discovered the fraud on August 23rd after the legitimate vendor, a construction company, called to ask why it hadn't been paid. Three payments were made to the fraudulent account, one on August 10th for $1.9 million, another one on August 17th for twenty-two grand, and a third on August 19th for $9.9 million. The cybercriminals went as far as to create multiple websites for more than 12 construction companies in the area to collect from the real business partners, uh, businesses' business partners. The good news for McEwen is that they were able to recover uh, roughly 92% or about 10 or almost $11 million of their stolen funds in the end. But again, here's a situation where a company emailed somebody in finance, said, hey, this is our new banking information. That person in finance said, okay, well, fine, I'll change it. They didn't make any checks. They didn't verify with the client. Are you sure? You didn't call up. Hey, John at blah, blah, blah company. Uh, we, we, got, we got your request. Uh, we just want to make sure you really want to change to this bank. None of that happened. So the next one is oh, the Ohio-based Scowler Company, a commodities trading firm, was scammed out of more than $17 million in an elaborate spear phishing campaign. First, there were emails supposedly from the CEO saying, the Scowler, saying that Scowler was buying a company in China. The emails weren't from the CEO's office email address and moreover warned the controller not to communicate about the deal through other channels in order for us not to infringe SEC regulations, claimed the email. The emails also instructed the controller to get the wire instructions from an actual employee of the company's actual accounting firm, KPMG. The phone number provided in the email was answered by someone with the right name at KPMG. So I get an email from my CEO. He tells me to do, uh, do a wire to a new company. He also tells me to keep it secret. And he tells me to, to get the wiring instructions from my existing uh, accounting company, KPMG, and it gives me a telephone number to call to speak directly to my representative. I call that number, person answers the phone, it's the right name of the person, so what happens? I do it. Since Scowler was in fact discussing expanding in China, the controller fell for the emails and sent off the money. The KPMG employee did exist, according to FBI documents, but it wasn't his email, nor his phone number, 
and he's never heard of Scowler. While the email looked like it came from a valid KPMG email address, kpmg-office.com, it was actually based on a server in Russia, and the telephone number listed was a Skype account registered using an IP address in Israel. Let me take a minute to give you some powerful reasons why you should share this video. Now, if you have seen this before, feel free to skip to the next section or just enjoy it again. If you haven't seen it yet, I want to show you how you can be a superstar in your team and your company just by sharing this video. First off, I really appreciate you watching this episode, liking it, and of course, subscribing to my channel. But I ask you to share it through any and all channels you have access to, whether Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Pinterest, you can link to it from your websites or even send it in an email to your colleagues, friends, and family. If we can spread this information to enough people, we all together can work to make the internet more secure. So share it with developers in your team or developers that you know so they can integrate the security measures I will outline in this episode directly into their workflow. Share it with quality testers in your team or ones you know so they can benefit from this information and improve things like writing their acceptance criteria and test cases. Share it with project managers and product owners so they can make sure projects have the right security principles in mind and can talk intelligently to stakeholders about the importance of these measures. Share it with CEOs, VPs, and managers to show them that you're on top of these topics, taking them seriously, making you look like a superstar in their eyes. And finally, share it with your mom, dad, grandma, or friends, or anyone you can think of. Keeping them safe and helping them have a safer experience on the internet will definitely save you time and headache. Now, if you haven't already, right now is the perfect time to pause this video and share it before we really get deep into the content. Thanks again for your support. Next up, Technomont SPA, an Italian engineering construction and procurement company, was defrauded of $18.6 million through an elaborate BEC scheme, also known as CEO fraud. The hacker sent emails to the head of Technomont PVT Limited, which is the Indian subsidiary of the Milan headquarter Technomont SPA, through an email account that looked deceptively similar to that of Group CEO Pierre Roberto Forguero, according to a police complaint. The hackers then arranged a series of conference calls to discuss a possible secretive and highly confidential acquisition in China. Several people played various roles during these calls, pretending to be the group CEO, a top Switzerland-based lawyer and other senior executives of the company, according to the complaint submitted by Technomont PVT Limited to the Mumbai Police's Cybercrime Unit. The hackers convinced the India head that the money couldn't be transferred from Italy due to regulatory issues. He then transferred the amount in three tranches during one week in November. The money that was transferred, 5.6 million, 9.4 million, 3.6 million from India to the banks in Hong Kong, it was with withdrawn within minutes. The company sacked the India chief and the head of accounts and finance as per the police complaint filed with the Mumbai Cyber Police. According to people in the know, the email's wording imitated the writing style of the group chairman. Other communications that purported to come from various executives were similar in nature as the hackers may have managed to penetrate the IT system and study their emails. Next up, Pathé, a European cinema chain, was scammed out of more than 21 million dollars, approximately 19 million euros, when two top-level executives were targeted in an, an email scam. The fraud kicked off with several emails apparently sent from the personal account of Pathesio Mark Lachan to DG Maiger, the CEO of the Path Netherlands, asking her to wire up to 19.2 million euro in four tranches to the bank account of Towering Stars General Trading LLC in Dubai. The funds were supposedly to be used to acquire a company in Dubai. Mayer was asked to respect the strictest confidentially about the transaction and exchange emails solely with Lacan's personnel account, uh, personal account to ensure that their discussions remain free of any risk of disclosure and to respect the transaction's norm, as well as give them an advantage over their competitors. The fraud was discovered March 28th, a day after Mayer was asked to transfer money from the cash pool of the French headquarters to the Netherlands to complete the last part of the transaction. 
Zoom Corporation, a leading electronic funds transfer provider, found itself in the crosshairs of a BEC scam that cost them nearly $31 million. The U.S. company, which provides money transfer services to banks, money transfer companies, and retailers, revealed the fraud when it filed financial documents to regulators. The incident involved employee impersonation and fraudulent requests targeting the finance department, resulting in the transfer of $30.8 million in core companies' uh, uh, in the cash to overseas accounts. Businesses that deal with people's money need to be seen as having the right security in place. A fraud like this will be very damaging to a company in the financial services sector. The company's share price dropped 6.2% following the announcement of the fraudulent losses, and the company's chief finance officer, Matt Hibbard, resigned following the revelation. These types of scams have devastating effects not just on the company or on their, their, their underlying profit uh, and loss statements, but also to people's lives. This chief financial officer was most likely otherwise a very good person, and very good at his job, but he had to resign because of being scammed out of $31 million. Leone AG, a leading manufacturer of wire and cables, was scammed out of $40 million euros, approximately $44 million, when a finance employee in the company's Romania office was targeted by a phishing email claiming to be from the company's senior German executives. According to Tripwire, a young woman working in the finance department of Leone's factory in Bistrita, Romania, received an email in mid-August claiming to have come from the company's senior German executives. Although Leone AG owns four factories in Romania, this factory in Bistrita is the only one authorized to make money transfers, showing that the cyber criminals investigated the company's practices before launching the attack. Using this and other inside information to appear more convincing, the email was able to trick the recipient into believing it was a genuine request for a staggering 40 million euros to be transferred out of the company's bank account. Now, if you watch my episode on the top 10 types of phishing attacks, you'll notice this is being a classic CEO fraud phishing attack, just like many of the other ones. So now you know the common thread. The fact that, o that only one or this factory is o the only one in Romania that's able to make money transfers shows either a partial inside job or that someone who had spent time previously making inquiries about how things worked inside the company before actually perpetrating the scam. These people knew how the business worked. They knew which company or which division was actually able to make this transfer before they launched this attack. Leone stock has dropped almost 7% after announcing the event. So here's more uh, evidence that shows that just losing the money itself is not all you lose in terms of financial losses. If you are a publicly traded company and this happens to you, your stock will definitely be impacted once you have to make it public. Ubiquity Networks. We're starting to get up in the high millions of numbers, in case you haven't guessed. Ubiqu Ubiquity Networks, a U.S. computer networking company, faced an unusual situation. The company was unaware that it had been taken for $46.7 million. They didn't even know it. Nearly 10% of the company's cash position through CEO fraud emails and was notified of the activity by the FBI. The company didn't even know about this yet. The FBI informed them. The FBI had been watching the company's Hong Kong unit's bank account. There are few public details as to what exactly happened, but it appears a member of staff in one of its subsidiary companies based in Hong Kong fell victim to what is known as CEO scam or the business email compromise attack. In its SEC filing, Ubiquity outlined some details including the fact that the incident involved employee impersonation and fraudulent requests from an outside entity targeting the company's finance department. This fraud resulted in transfers of funds aggregating $46.7 million held by a company subsidiary incorporated in Hong Kong to other overseas uh, accounts held by third parties. An internal investigation showed that the internal control over financial reporting was ineffective due to one or more material weaknesses. Now, we should review our own internal financial controls to ensure there are methods in place to stop this kind of scam from affecting our own companies. Now, we saw this in an earlier uh, um, example where uh, the uh, release of funds only required the author authorization from two senior people. Well. 
One was a scammer who was impersonating the CEO, and the other was the person in finance who was actually received the request. So those two, that shows a, a hole in that approval uh, process. Next up, Upshur Smith Laboratories, a U.S. drug company, was swindled out of more than $50 million over the course of three weeks in 2014. Scammers emailed the accounts payable coordinator at Upshur Smith Laboratories, a drug company in Maple Grove, and pretended to be the CEO. The thieves instructed the, comp the employee to follow directions from the CEO as well as a lawyer's name they provided. Over the course of three weeks in 2014, the employee asked the company's bank, Fifth Third Bank, to make nine wire transfers totaling more than $50 million. A lawsuit against the company said the bank missed multiple red flags, the rush nature of the requests, the scammers' insistence on confidentiality, the departure from ordinary procedures, failure to include a second person on the requests, the amounts and the frequency of the transfers, and suspicious beneficiaries, including one named Sunny Billion Limited. The big lesson? The takeaway is education. Corporations should be conducting training for their employees about this very type of scam, Lanterman told Fox. Uh, Lanterman was a, um, a reporter or a lawyer. The problem is you should never take an email at face value. You should always, especially with a financial uh, matters, you need to question it. You need to directly ask the CEO, Are you, is this really for you? Are you sure you want this done? Speak to them directly, especially for the sum of $50 million. FACC, an Austrian aerospace parts maker, lost $61 million, roughly 54 million euro, in a CEO fraud scam. Again, CEO fraud, BEC scams. The attack on FACC, which supplies aero structures, engines, and nacellus, cabin interiors, and aftermarket uh, services to major airline customers like Boeing and Airbus, had a damaging cascade effect that precipitated the firing of the company's chief executive officer and chief financial officer. It all started with a whaling attack, where a cyber criminal masquerades as a senior executive at the firm with the aim of tricking an employee or, or department into a specific action. A hacker went after FACC's financial, uh, finance department, requesting they move $56 million into the criminal's account. This request came in the form of a faux email from a company CEO, Walter Steven. The goal of the attacks like this is to create a believable message by imitating the CEO's writing style. The cyber criminal generally breaks into the company's email server and studies the executive's writing habits and quirks to make the message look legitimate. The fraudulent email purportedly from Steven requested the money for an uh, for an acquisition project. So, again, the amount of recon that these people are doing, you know, this is not a $300 scam of, like, your grandmother. They're going after $61 million. They put a lot of effort into this. They use backdoors or vulnerabilities to break into your mail server. They sit there and they review emails from the CEO or from the person that they're trying to impersonate to get the little nuances of the writing style. Um, you know, is, is he very abrupt? You know, is, is he very wordy? You know, like what are typical sentences of him? Like what's his signature look like? All of that stuff is what they want to get in terms of the, re of the research that they do and the recon they do from your system before they initiate this attack because to them, it's worth $61 million. It's not 300 bucks. It's not from your grandmother or your grandfather or your cousin or from you. It's from your company and it's a lot of money. So a lot of effort goes into this. Next up, we have Cleveland Bank in Belgium lost 75.8 million dollars roughly 70 million euro in a ceo fraud attack that was reportedly discovered during an internal audit so there is little to no information about how this attack was per perpetrated but sources say it all came back to ceo fraud aka bec scams even though there's little information about it there is one clear piece of information that should give you pause the bank had to specifically reassure markets that they had enough liquidity to swallow this loss. This is a quote from them. Thanks to the reserves accumulated in the past, Kralin can sustain this loss without it having consequences for the bank's clients and partners. Look for Sally, the bank's CEO stated. The intrinsic profitability of the bank remains intact. Clearly, the idea of being able to absorb these types of losses should be on the minds of all CEOs. Not all companies have this type of security for various reasons, so it's imperative that we remain vigilant and implement the checks and balances in our process to ensure these types of uh, scams don't happen, or oopses, don't happen to us. 
last up Facebook and Google now there's, there's two companies combined but it was from the same perpetrator Facebook and Google together were scammed out of more than 100 million dollars between 2013 and 2015 through an elaborate in fake invoice scam a 50-year-old man, Evaldo Rimasaukas, orchestrated a scheme that included setting up fake businesses and sending phishing emails to employees of Facebook and Google. The scheme ultimately duped those multi-billion dollar companies out of more than $100 million in total between 2013 and 2015. Rimasaukas incorporated a company that poses another company, Taiwan-based Quanta Computer, which actually does business with Facebook and Google. So it was like an evil twin. Rimasaukas served as the sole member of the board of directors of the fake company and opened, maintained, and controlled various accounts at banks in Latvia and Cyprus in the name of the fake company. In the scam, Rimasaukas and his co-conspirators created fairly convincing forgery emails using fake email accounts which looked like they were sent by employees of the actual Quanta in Taiwan. They sent phishing emails with fake invoices to employees at Facebook and Google who regularly conducted multi-million dollar transactions with Quanta and those employees responded by paying out more than a hundred million dollars to the fake company. So what can we do to protect ourselves from these types of scams? Well, alert your executives. These scams are getting more sophisticated by the minute, and we need to be on the lookout. We need to review our wire transfer and security policies and procedures and how financial transactions are, are, are um, completed to ensure that your company cannot fall for CEO or BEC um, uh, uh, scams. You need to create a social engineering red flags list you need to print and laminate it and give it to all your C-level executives as, as well as, you know, your, your lower, let's call them lower level, but you, all of your employees because it's not just CEO scam. Um, it's also scams that go to uh, lower, lower level uh, employees as well that can affect your entire company. So it's not just the financial side. It's also tricking them into installing malware or backdoors or ransomware on their on the systems in your company you need to have a list of common tactics uh, that is, are used to gain your um, your trust have you put your guard down so that they can get whatever gold done that they have steal money or get into your systems last thing I say is you should share this video with friends and business partners so that they can become more informed as well with that I say Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already. And smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.